Happy Floss Tube Friday, friends. My name is Carrie. This is Tiger Lily Designs. Welcome to Floss Tube episode number 57. Yay! Happy March to you, friends. Today we have a jam packed episode full of sun. I feel like there's so much on the table. I can't even get over it. I have been super busy this week doing all the things. I've got cross stitch for you, including whip progress, as well as a new Tiger Lily exclusive. Spoiler alert freebie chart to share with you. Um, we're going to talk about quilting and sewing galore. I've been crazy on the sewing machine this week, making things that I didn't need to make, but I'm gonna show you some bags galore is what I'm calling that segment. Uh, we're gonna have the giveaway winner from last week, keeper updates, shop updates, all the things. But without further ado, let's dive right into the stitching, shall we? So let me pull up my what, one of my big girls, my affectionate girl that I love to call Miss Harriet. She is my birthday start. Um, if you're stitching along, I'm so excited. There have been so many people that have been doing different things. And so here she is, Miss Harriet Hay from Mill on the Floss Samplers. Let me grab. She is in my Keeper Club Keeper this time around. These are all my friends that are stitching with me. Here I did a full color conversion almost full um so these are the flosses i have a blog post if you want to see it so my my floss my fabric is 16 count lfa boston tea party my flosses are lots of over dyed so what did i do this week and of course i left a needle right in there from last night's stitching can you tell what i did what is going on? Okay, so there we go. So I, I was working on some grass felling, obviously. That's where I stopped mid-needle, mid mid-thread. But what I did get done this week on Miss Harriet was this sweet little funky peacocky bird. He's so fun. And that this is a prime example of why I was so excited to switch my colors to over dyes. Can you tell? So this one, I think, is bedazzled. Yeah, so this is Color Works, classic Color Works Be Dazzled. Um, so you can just get the variegation. I'm a big fan of variegation pops. And so the other variegation that you can see that I've been working on is monkey grass. See that grass going up and down? I just love variegation. Um, would it big bang for your buck, right? So we talked about me finishing the border last week. I didn't do any border work. I didn't give her, she got a couple of mites and it was just monkey grass and this peacock. But I did get a couple questions that I want to talk about Miss Harriet. Um, my friend Candy, I do believe, she got the silks and she was waiting for the silks and they came and she was surprised at the, so, and I hadn't really looked. I just looked at the picture. When I did my color conversion, I did it mostly from the chart or from the picture on the cover. And I know that, you know, sometimes pictures don't do it justice and all the things, but this is what I loved. So I wanted this to be the inspiration for the colors that I actually stitched with. So when I'm looking at the house, I see a red house. I don't know what you see, but I see a red house. So I, when I charted it or when I did my color conversion, I must not have been paying attention, but I did, um, the house is, let me just check to tell you accurately. I certainly don't want to tell you what I didn't do. X Christmas red, two, six, four, so, 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 so. Mm -hmm. la, la, la. Talk amongst yourselves. Okay. Yes. Ruby slippers, Ruby slippers. I could have looked at my floss and realized, you know, which one did I buy three three skeins for? Because I figured that that red house was going to be a beast to stitch. I just looked at it, red house. Well, in actuality, the house is charted in two colors. This house is one color and this house is another color. Oh, I hadn't noticed that when I did the color conversion. And but Candy was telling me that when she got the silks, the called for silks, which you know the, the budget buster that silks are, the the two different colors of the red slash pinks for the house were very different. And she was kind of discouraged and she was asking me, like, what should I, what are you gonna do? What what how do you realize that? And I hadn't realized it, to be honest with you, because I just saw a big old red house. And that's how I'm gonna stitch it. I am not gonna stitch it as a two-tone house, even though it's charted as a two-tone house. So that's something to think about when you're stitching, if you're stitching Miss Harriet, um, when it comes down to the call for whether you're doing the overdyed or the DMCs or the silks or whatever you're doing, it's charted for two different colors. 
So you can make a choice on whether you want to do it as charted. She was saying, I have to be honest, I haven't read the book that came with the book. Um, but she was mentioning that um, the designers alluded to the fact that maybe she was trying to chart the sh house was shaded like it was in the shade. I don't know. And I get it. I get, uh, you know, designer, right. But I want one big red house. I'm using variegated floss, so I will get my color movement and different differentiation. Woo, Jeopardy word of the day. Um, by just using an over dyed floss, but it's all gonna be one. That's how I'm stitching it. But so it's something to think about. I hadn't noticed it and Candy brought it to my attention. I hadn't gotten to the big house yet because I worked on the Miss Little Peacock. So that is the only update I have on Miss Harriet. But you know, slow and steady. She's a big girl. She's gonna be around a while and that's okay. But without further ado, let me show you what we've got for you today. Now, if you were here, I love Sue Bonnets, Bit little bonnet girls. I think they're called Sue Bonnets. I'm calling them Sue Bonnets. Um, it's a historical, no, I don't know. But I did a Sue Bonnet chart. So what I've decided for my new Tiger Lily series. Now, if you were here during Christmas and Stitchmas, I did a series of three super adorable, I loved them, super adorable ornaments that got finished on the 141 design sleds and sleighs, sleds, sleds. And there was a Santa, a Mrs. Claus, and a snowman, this three series. I'll post a picture right here so you can see. There's, that was my first little dip my toe in the pool of cross-stitch charting and sharing the charts with you. So those were all freebie charts if you wanted to grow and grab them on my website. I will link everything down below. But so now it's like, okay, what's my new 2023 fun little chart series? It's going to be Bonnet Girls, and I'm so excited. So I started, well, because it's spring, right? I don't know if it's spring where you are, but here in Mount Vernon, Virginia, the daffodils and the tulips and the crocuses and all the florals are super confused because they were blooming in, in February, which is not usually what happens around here. Our spring is usually like late March, April, but we are full boat spring. No snow this year. I'm okay. I mean, I like a good snow, but... I'm moving on, it's spring. So my first Sue Bonnet is the Sue Bonnet Spring. So without further ado, let me share. Now she is a sweet, sweet little thing. Here she is. Ah, so she is just a sweet little girl. She's got her watering can and her blue shoes that match her bonnet, of course, and her little fun little dress. It's all got this cute little polka dotty floral design. So I did chart this, like I said. Here is the chart. You don't have to worry about screenshotting. It's a freebie chart on my website, linked down below. So you can go and grab, it's a full color PDF and it's huge and big. You don't even need your glasses to see it because that's how I like to stitch. So that's how I stitch from this. I don't need my glasses. It's nice and big and colorful and love it. Um, so she's not fully finished. So I did, I had plans of bringing her to you fully finished. And we'll talk more about that in what I'm calling the bags galore segment. But what I have now decided is she's going to become something different. But let me, let me give you the details of Miss Sue Bonnet. So Miss Sue is seven colors. She measures 36 by 50. So she's a sweet little tiny thing. And which is what my um, ornaments for July or for Christmas were, my jolly tags. Those were, there were small little stitches too. Those were full coverage. So Miss Sue is not full coverage. So she, you should, I whipped her up in a day, less than a day. Um, no, it was a long day, but you know, we got her done and it was super fun. And so I was like, what am I going to do with her? So I charted her. She is seven floss, but so 36 by 50. This is on a 16 count, picture this plus fog is the color. It's a scrap I had. And so she is perfect scrap buster fabric because she measures about two and a half by three and a half on 16 count, give or take if you adjust your count or use linen and all the things. But anyway, super small scrappy thing. Um, she is seven colors. Now I did chart her 
because in case you're new here, I'm Artville Artisan for 2022 slash three. And so I wanted to dig into my Artville thread again. And so here it is. This isn't, first of all, look at this sweet, sweet little Ort Catcher doodani thing. I'll pull out the floss and my friend Sarah gave this to me for my birthday. And I thought this is the perfect little thing to pop up and hold up to show you guys. So I am using the RFL 12 weight thread. Now RFL comes, as you know, RFL floss, um, gets used a lot by Fat Quarter Shop. And because she's got Lori Holt, has extensive color collections that match her fabrics and she's designs and RFL floss and all the things. They have special boxes. So that's floss. The RFL floss is a six-stranded floss on a wooden spool, very similar to DMC because it's, it's not over dyed. It's a solid color. So, but it's very similar to DMC in that it's six stranded. You pull the strands, you use one for, for higher counts, you use two for bigger counts, all those things. So that's the RFL floss on the wooden spools. RFL also has a 12 weight thread. So this is a thread and I've talked about this before, but let's just review once again. So this is their 12 weight. Their 12 weight is one strand. So their one strand that comes right off the spools is the equivalent to almost two strands of DMC. I'm going to say two strands, like 1.95 two strands. So it's like two strands of DMC is the thickness of one strand of the 12 weight. It's very comparable to the sulky spools that people talk about a lot. Um, but this is Arafil's colors in 12 weight. So tip to you, if you like Lori Holt's collections in her fl RFL floss, but you don't like the wooden spools and then you pull them off and then you strand and then you have to figure out where you're going to put your like the other four strands because you only use two. It's kind of tricky. You have to manage those. Um, they're not orts because you're not going, they're still usable threads. So it's full length, right? You have to manage those. And so on my regular cards, on the little floss cards, I have an extra hole punch and that's where I hang the extra. But with the wooden spool, like where do you put the extra? So you can always, the, the, the moral of the tip was, is that you can, if Lori holds in charts in one, two, three, four, these colors, almost all of the floss colors come in 12 weight thread as well. So if you decide that you want to, now the, the, the trick with 12 weight, I found, you know, so it's going to be a 14 or 16 count or 28 or 32 count is the right coverage for this. Because obviously you can't use a higher count 18 or 20 or 36 or 40 because then you'd be using one strand of DMC. So a two stranded off the spool is going to be too thick. Now, it, maybe you like super thick coverage, but I love the stitching right off the spool. Like I'm telling you, it is addicting. So these are the seven colors and they're fully charted and given to you right here on the PDF when you download it. Like I said, this is a PDF download on my website, link down below, and you can get this sweet chart. But it's one of those things where it's seven colors. It's not, they're not super, you know, crazy colors. It's two pinks. You can change it to whatever you want. Maybe you want your soup on it to be purples and reds, or maybe you want her to, to be green, like her dress to be green or blue. or So you can totally make this your own and customize it. I'm so excited. So this is my new release freebie chart to you available on my website. I hope you're excited. So the next one is Sue Bonnet Summer. I don't know what she's going to be doing. I'm thinking kind of watermelon or 4th of July, or I don't know. I have to think about what speaks summer and what's sue doing she's still gonna be wearing her bonnet in her dress so don't get me wrong but her dress pattern may change maybe she's gonna have a chevron dress i don't know stay tuned for the next in the sue bonnet series so but let's talk about what i was going to do so sue bonnet super sweet right she's so sweet and so i was going to but like my other smalls were ornaments perfect for the tree well this can't be an ornament and it's kind of Sure, I could put her in a dull bowl, but it's not really like dull bowl -y themed to me. So I was thinking, well, I want to put her on something that I see all the time. And this is where we get to the bags galore segment. Welcome to bags galore. Ah! <laughs> 
All right, friends. So let me tell you a little story of why I have, I don't know, seven new bags. Okay. It's a little bit of a story. I hope it's fun. So I decided when I was designing, as a designer, a maker, a quilter of all the things, I do treat myself to some fun time. Sewing is not just, sewing is my job. One of my jobs. Lots of the, so, uh, you know, sometimes, but it's also my hobby. And so I like to enjoy the creativeness of coming up with something new. So like when I charted Miss Sue and that was something fun and new and exciting for me. So I stitched her up in one night and I was so excited. And so to continue on with the something new, I was like, okay, what does she need to be? And so we talked about her not going on a double or an ornament. Obviously she's not equivalent to an ornament. She's Sue Bonnet Spring. And so I thought she would be perfect for a little focus piece in a ditty bag, like one of those zipper pouches that you use. I feel like I've got zipper pouches that holds all the things. On, on a side note, I'll tell you why else I need zipper pouches later on in the episode. But first motivation for zipper pouch rabbit hole bags galore segment was to find the perfect size pattern style to put Miss Sue on. As you can tell, I haven't found it yet because Miss Sue is still just a stitch. But let me show you some of the bags I did. So step one, what's this cute? Okay, first of all, so I do deep dive. I didn't have to reinvent the entire wheel because I have quite a stash in the other room. I've told you that before of like orphan quilt blocks in that I would just scrappy put things together. Or if I made when I was making quilts in the day, I would always make an extra block or two because you never know what's going to happen. And it's easier to have an extra to need it and not have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Yes, words of wisdom. So I always have this random, so I went into my random quilt block drawer and I was like, this is gonna be perfect. I'm just working up some samples. I don't want to use good fabric or whatever. I want to use just things I have, but it'll be fun, right? So design concept one was this cute little, I'm calling it like a sock box. Socks, S-O-X, box. So I am going to, is this a pattern you might want? <sighs> Okay, first of all, why am I calling this socks box? Because I'm knitting socks now, and it's the perfect size to put your two balls of thread, yarn and all the things, so it's my socks box. But it's like a dop kit, you know, box, fully lined. So I was like, okay, so that's a cute thing. No, not for Sue. But I did end up, because I liked that, um, that kit, I was like, ooh, but maybe I need another socks box. So again, obviously I'm just changing the sizes, changing the insides, making it fun. Um, I'll tell you why I decided to make a couple more, like I said, later on. So those were the dop kit type boxy shaped bags that I decided. Well, then we went into the more, I don't know what you call this size, this size or this style, where it's just the gusset, it's a gusset bottom. So it's a gusset bottom bag. These are all always fully lined. I always use these big zippers because I love a big handle. Those little tiny ones that you can barely hold on to for the birds. So they're all fully lined. So this is just a gusset bottom bag. And, I'll, and then there's this, this was one of those random quilt blocks, right? This was a 12 inch quilt block that I cut in half. So six inches on this side, six and so, I mean, like super cute. Shockingly, I have lots of orange. So I did put a tag on this one because I thought it was fun to use the, the faux leather from the bottom. So this was a gusset bag. And so I thought, well, that's the right scale. But no, not that. <laughs> so then, so those are all just quilting fabric lined with interfacing as well as batting. Then I went on to, well, so I used foam fusible foam for my project keepers, right? My project keepers that I make, this is foam. And I love the sturdiness of it. So then I decided, well, I decided a couple things. Then I decided to make this. Now this, this is purely selfish and I'll tell you why I needed this one. I'll tell you now. So this is just a foam. Ugh, just love it. It's, it reminds me kind of like if this was the size of an iPad, it would be one of those iPad protection cases. But it's perfect. It's got my sweet little, upside down, the, those ornament, small little ornament kits right in here 
It's a sweet little project bag. And oh my goodness, this was the easiest thing to do ever. This, like I said, just random quilt blocks. This was a scrappy, I must have dozens of these scrappy strips ready to go into a scrappy quilt that I haven't done. But I use fusible foam. So it's two-sided, quilted it, folded it. It's just like origami, folded together, add a zipper, add the binding. This took zero time, zero time. So I love this and I'll tell you why I had to make myself one of these, but then back to the bags. Then I was like, okay, so foam, how about this little cutie? So this, the foam gives you the stability to obviously sit down and hang out by itself. Like it is not going anywhere. This one has this cute little triangle. It's not a traditional gusset. It's this fun little feature, which I thought was fun. Again, super scrappy. I'm using what I got because I'm just working up the prototype for bags. But then I just end up with bags and bags and bags and a binding top. Last but not least, <laughs> this one is, this was my, do I really need this? This has nothing to do with cell bonnet. So at some point during this bag making production, for the last week, I did one bag. I gave myself one hour every day. I'm kind of weird. I set a timer and I would give myself one hour every day to just work on these like fun bag prototype things. And so I ended up between last week and this week coming up with all those bags. Um, by the end of it, by the end of all of those, I decided Subana's not going to go on a bag. <gasps> I'll tell you what she's going to go on in a minute. But she's not going to go on a bag. That's just so silly. But I had gone down the rabbit hole of the bags. And so once I did that foam one, I loved it for a knitting bag. So back to the socks box, remember? So I made myself more socks box bags because they're perfect little one skein projects, whether it's socks or hats or the Sophie shawl or a scarf or whatever you're doing, it's one skein caked up and your needles and the project half knitted up fits in this fantastic socks box bag. Um, so I'm super excited about that. But then I was like, but I love the stand up sturdiness of that foam bag. So I made myself the guesses again, this was in my drawer, my, my orphan drawer. I added some vintage lace that I had. This is foam. You can see I quilted it. Add the quilted stitch in just to give it that extra oomph. Fun little, recognize that. Got a little bit of scraps on that. So I thought, well, that just, so. this one I made for a bigger knitting project. Now this one is designed a little different in that you can see it is not lined. It is exposed seams. I did use my serger. So all the seams are surged. So no thread, no loosey, th things like that. But this way, because the foam, it's the fabric is sewn to the foam, you don't get the, what I'm calling the loosey goosey aspect of lining. So there's the lining, right? You can see this one's fully lined. So there's no seams, no nothing fully lined, but you can see that the fabric's kind of loosey goosey, right? Cause it's not sticking to anything. Well, this variety, I was just, again, prototyping and playing with designing. This one, I utilized the functionality of the double-sided foam to make a bag without loosey goosey. So that way I feel like it makes it more functional. And it, I don't think it takes away from the pretty aspect. I love pretty. So I don't think it takes away from the pretty. I finished it with the serger, but it gives me the functionality, mo all that space to shove in, you know, a sweater's quantity worth of yarn. So I'm so excited. I love this size. And of course I have to add a handle because whenever I'm grabbing one of my knitting bags, I have, so I had so much fun designing all these different bags. Um, I just wanted to show, you know, it's always fun to show you, show and tell you guys like, even though this is floss tube, this is quilting. Sometimes you use these bags for um, cross stitch. You totally could. Like, for example, this one, right? So fun. So fun. And let me tell you, with the foam, this is the easiest project. But I guess, of course, you can make this any size you want. The concept, the folding and the thing, so easy. Like, you can make it 
a normal project bag size, 11 by 13, 15 by whatever, cute snappable, all the things. This is like the cat's pajamas, if I do say so. Um, so those are the bags galore. So before I move on, I just want to tell you, so leave me a comment down below if, did you like any of those bags? Not, I don't need your pat on the back. I mean, do you want to know how to make them? Are any of them like, oh my gosh, please show me how to make do any like the socks box the foam ones that super foamy project bag it can be anything you want like easy breezy which one maybe you want to see all three I don't know but I think I'm adding to my video like to do list and I want to share and show you guys things that you want to see so maybe I mean there's a zillion project bag tutorials on YouTube so don't get me wrong I'm sure you could find somebody else who's shown it their way but Maybe you want to see the Tiger Lily way, the Tiger Lily twist. I don't really think I twist any of them. Well, maybe. I don't know. Just let me know down below if any of those ones you want to see in a tutorial, an upcoming tutorial, and I will make that happen for you. But back to Sue Bonnet. So since I decided Sue Bonnet was not going to be a bag after I did, you know, bags galore, I decided what she's going to be and I can't wait. Of course, I didn't decide this until about three o'clock this morning. That's when I do my best thinking. When I wake up and I'm not sleeping and I've got about 37 things in the list in my head already because today is long. The to-do list is bonkers. Um, and I'll tell you why. But it is, so that's when I came up with the, she's not going to be a bag, of course she's gonna be a needle case. Now this is one of my vintage stitching needle cases that I made special for some of my um, Tiger Lily Keeper customers and friends from last year. Just a sweet little design. It's got a pocket. This is where you put your needles. You stick them in 26, 28, whatever you do. And I put, and I featured a piece of vintage stitching. Well, imagine Imagine instead of a piece of vintage stitching, how sweet is Sue gonna be on this? You're right, super sweet. So super sweet Sue Bonnet will be becoming a needle book case for moi. And I am going to film a video tutorial showing you how I do that. So that's not going to be, it's probably going to be a couple of weeks until that comes out. So you've got a little bit of time. Like I said, it only takes you a day to stitch or two, whatever. Um, but get your Sue Bonnet stitched up and then I will show you how to make a sweet little needle book from her and you can store all your needles or you know you can this is small enough you can make her whatever size you want i'm gonna make this size approximately it's perfect it holds like a package of peacekeepers in the package needles back here if you have some of those short scissors they can go right in here and then this is like your handy dandy i'll show you how to do the snaps all the things so that is what miss sue is going to be in her future life and she's super excited about it she just doesn't even know but that's what she's gonna be so like I said I came up with that this morning at 3 a.m. so it did not happen and it was not going to happen before today's video but it's coming so I wanted to spoiler alert and tell you so you could get excited get your Sue stitched up so you can join me in needle book making all right friends let's move on to the next segment now I'm just gonna give you a little bit of fun haul in the stitchy world because that's fun so i got something for me personally i can gifted myself something this is from r and r wordworks i kept their business card so i could show it to you and so when i was charting up one of my big girls on dmc i was like you know what i need to get myself one of those winders <gasps> so fantastic so this is one of their fantastic dmc nine inch winders so fun but while I was there, I got myself one of their clapper style scissor holders. And now I just feel like I need to collect all the scissors. So it's super sweet. It's got, I think, 12 holes. Some of them I have somewhere else. So this isn't my full scissor collection, but I wanted to show you how it works. The, the one thing I do want to tell you is these are the Ginger designer scissors. They're a little wider, so they don't fit all the way down. The Kahanas fit perfect. These little swans fit perfect. These tulip pink ones fit perfect. All the things. So this was a fun little clapper that I treated myself to. 
because it's fun to have little pretty organization for your things. Speaking of pretty organization, remember I showed you that cute little stitchy case? Let me show you what I did. Now, if you remember, this is this is what it looks like. Now, I know you've seen them. They're like all over the world. Now, first time I saw it was Jessica from Sweetwater Stitcher shared hers, I'm gonna say like a month or two ago. And so I was like, oh, go to Target, add the cart. So I was able to get it online, not at my local Target, but I got it online and it came really fast. And so let me show you what, of course, in true carry fashion, I wasn't going to just like keep it as is. Let me show you what I got. So while I was on Target.com ordering my said case, I was like, what am I going to put on the top of it? Gray is fun. It's that faux leather, plasticky leather. And I was like, you know what? This needs a little Tiger Lily twist. So I got myself these Mondo Llama. Mm -hmm. These are from Target online. Mondo Llama fabric paints. So it's kind of like the puffy paints of the 90s. Um, is exactly what they are. So I ordered, added these to the car. You know, I needed to get over $35 for free shipping or some, uh, some, I was like, sure, like this will be fine. So I added those to cart too. Okay. Then it came and what did I do to it? Sure did. <laughs> so of course, as a quilter, I had to put a colorful rainbow, super fun quilty star on the cover of mine. And then it just it needed a little more bling so I've got these rainbow dots that go around the perimeter looks like those candy dots again from the 90s love it so much okay so this just makes it fun and colorful and it's that puffy paint super shiny pretty love it you could write your name you could write stripes oh I just wanted to customize it and make it my own I also customized the interior now if you remember it was three sections the middle section was for rings I don't remember exactly, but I did totally customize this myself. So I took out the middle section and it was all fuzzy and gucky. I know that Jessica is taking out the entire section and putting this and kind of making it one big open table. I didn't do that because I like to keep it a little segmented, especially because I keep my glasses in here and these are my like big money prescription glasses. And so I like to keep them protected. So what I did, this is sticky back velvet and so I used a little template and I put this hot pink of course hot pink sticky velvet in there so that's what my glasses are going against I have my Kohanas in there with their case so they're not going to scratch it up my extra scissors lip gloss I use it also to hold my orts so I just wanted to show you that's orts from more than this week it's been a hot minute this is a sweet little stitch my friend Sarah sent me my um corner gauge from the keeper club a needle minder, there's a needle on there, a new package of needles, my needle threader, of course my black wing pencil, because you never know when you're gonna need to mark something, and then I have some more extra needles on here. So this is my sweet little stitchy case that I um, just keep, it's got all the things I need to stitch and go all in one thing. And of course I had to make it fun and funky and colorful, because you know, you know. I did want to announce today's giveaway winner from last week. So if you remember, I did the 100 ways. This was a finish that I had for, to show you guys during last week's episode. And so since I finished it, I'm giving away the chart. It's kind of a share your stash. And the 100 ways, happy Stitcher. I used the random YouTube comment generator and hand happy Stitcher won the chart. So happy Stitcher, congratulations. If that is you, my email is down below. Send me a email with your shipping address and all the things and I'll give it out to you lickety split with an asterisk next to it so um let's talk about plans as to why there's an asterisk and then i'm gonna give you a little bit of tiger lily shop update so that'll be at the end in case you're like i don't need a shop update so um plans so why did i decide to make more bags and more things and go down the rabbit hole of this first of all this one right here right why did i do this well because tomorrow um lily and i are taking a fun mother daughter spring break trip to greece mm -hmm. <laughs> 
wasn't totally spur of the moment, but it was one of those, you never know if your college age daughter wants to spend spring break with you or if she wants to do like, you know, something else with her friends. So, but at some point between winter break and now we've decided that that would be a fun little whirlwind adventure for us. And so I'm so excited. So what's that mean? That means I'm gonna be on a plane for like 14 hours each way. Well, there's some layovers in there too, but the travel, is like, yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so during that travel, I, I was planning, I'm planning to cross stitch and knit and read my, my life away during those 14 hours, at least to try to get the time to go. So I wanted to create a fun little socks box for us to make some muscle burl hats. I'm going to wind us up some um, yarn and cakes for each of us to cast on a muscle borrow hat. Since Lily dipped her toe into knitting, we will see if we can each come home with a muscle borrow hat and then maybe some DK socks. I have my finger weight socks going, but I think I want to try a DK weight sock and I'm like, oh, I think I'm going to go top down because my friend Sue told me that I should try top down instead of toe up. So, okay. I'll try that. So we'll see. So I, did, I needed some project bags to put all these cute, because everything is better when you travel in cute little bags, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and then my, I will of course bring my one color stitch that I haven't touched since the last time I was on an airplane when we went to Alaska, which was that long dog sampler blue one color stitch. So I will bring that one. And then I also wanted to bring some of those Mill Hill Satsuma Street kits and the beading tacky buddy but i thought these fit perfect so i wanted to make something that just those would go in perfectly and slide it in my carry-on bag and so that's why the things get invented in my world out of necessity now usually i'm doing these things the night before so applaud on me for becoming stitching these bags and things way before today because we leave tomorrow morning at 6 a.m by the way so that's so that's why there's an asterisk that your stuff might not get shipped out. So if you contact me in the next week, I will be here and there. If you want to follow along on Instagram, I'll be sharing some stories and some pics of just our fun adventure because that's fun. And, but it'll be in stories. So, you know, you don't have to see if you don't want to, but if you want to see, I've never been there before. Either is Lively. We've got a couple things planned, but otherwise we're just like winging it and just going. So if you have anything in Athens, we're staying in Athens the whole time. Like I said, don't know what we're doing. We're just kind of making it up. I used credit card, frequent flyer points, which is why the plane ticket, I think, is taking 14 hours to get there because I had to manipulate it that way, but that's okay. It's super fun. I'm excited. Yay. So that is why I did that. So um, if you order anything on Tiger Lily, I don't think there's anything but tracker cards right now on the website. Um, it won't ship out until I get back. When I do get back, remember, the quilt along starts Monday, March 13th. We start our table runner quilt along. Are you excited? I know I have so many friends who tell me they're getting their fabric ready. They're super excited. All the things. I can't wait to do that with you guys. So that's that. Okay, so a little bit of Tiger Lily Shop updates. So let's first talk about Keeper Club. Now remember... Keeper Club was January. This was the January Keeper Club. The Keeper Club is a collection, a quarterly Keeper Club that gets you an exclusive fabric Tiger Lily Keeper. And then three to five stitching notions exclusively from small businesses. So that was the January box. So now I have opened it up. Thank goodness we had a little bit of gremlins and hiccups and things along the way. So the January box was a one-time purchase only. It was not a subscription sign up because of the website gremlins. But now, thank goodness, the gremlins have been tamed and the website is ready for subscription. So what that means is when you sign up, you will be automatically renewed. It's like an auto ship. So in April, you'll get the, you sign up on April 1st, your card will be charged. On April 25th, your box will ship out. Move on to July. If you are in the club, you're auto charged, auto shipped quarterly 
January, April, July, and October. But right now, it is only open to the January box purchasers first. So between now and March 10th, if you are a January club purchaser, customer, client, you got the January box. If you have this, this is for you. I sent out a special email only to those 100 customers. And so giving you the secret link, the secret link has a password protected product listing for you to go and complete your sign up for the subscription. Again, you do not have to do it ever again. I promise this is a subscription and it's working. Thank goodness. But you do have to enroll. Even if you got the January, you're not automatically enrolled until you enroll right now. So this email went out just two or three days ago. I talked about it in stories. A lot of the people have already purchased. I just wanted to remind you guys one more time here that if you were a January subscriber or a January box receiver that you have until March 10th to save your spot in the club. After the 10th, so on the 11th, Saturday, March 11th, I will be sending out another email. This email will go out to the Keeper Club wait list. Right now, I am currently taking wait list names and emails. So on Saturday, March 11th, you will receive an email, check your spam folders. So remember, if you've never received an email before, I don't understand web development, I don't understand emails, I don't understand technology, I could sew, I'd rather sew all day than understand all that stuff. But that's just the, the nature of the beast. And what I've learned is that if you've never received an email from me before, many times my email will end up in spam. And so I'm just letting you know if you signed up for the wait list, the Keeper Club wait list. Now, how do you sign up? Down below will take you directly to my website. There's a Keeper Club link and you can sign up for the wait list. So on March 11th, I will send out a email to the entire wait list. Now, I'll be real honest with you right now. The wait list is well beyond the size of the open slots that I have. I'm so, I'm sorry. I wish every single keeper is made with my two hands. And so I am the bottleneck in the issue or in this box number quantity. I wish there was more hours in the day. I wish I could, but I just don't. It's going to come so, out on Saturday the 11th. But it's going to be a link in your email, again, with a new password. Because, so only the wait list signer uppers will have access to the keeper club. So like I said, I'll be real honest. I have, I'm pretty sure that the wait list will fill up or that the boxes will fill up with the wait list. So if don't be like, Oh, I'll just wait until she tells me it's open. It's not going to open. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty confident that the wait list is going to take the rest of the open slots. So if you want to get into the keeper club, the best chances you have is to definitely get on the wait list. That's it. So I, I love that you guys love it. Like I said, I wish I could figure out how to make more. Anybody want to come sew in my studio in Mount Vernon with me? And then we can make more keepers. Yeah. Any takers? Anyway, so that is the Keeper Club update. I also wanted to give you an update on, I do have the March collection. So that's fun. So I will not have a video next Friday. Next Friday is our travel day back, and so it will be crazy bonkers. If you want to follow along, I'll pop in and say something on Instagram stories. But in the meantime, I will have a launch. So if you don't want a keeper club, but you definitely want a keeper, remember I do a keeper collection launch on the 15th every month at 1 p.m. Eastern. So that's sometime soon, March 15th. Anyway, because I was gonna be out of town, I've already finished them. So I thought, well, wouldn't it be fun to show you? So then maybe you can see which one you want. And if you want one, set yourself an alarm for March 15th at 12.55 p.m. Spoiler, sometimes I load them a couple minutes early. So 12.55, because I have to manually go and push one, two. Anyway, 12.55. So here is one. This is, this is a sweet little bobbin one. So this is vintage stitching. 
sweet little bobbin one. This was something similar, vintage stitching, pink, little looks like dogwood flowers, double pocket on the inside. Let's see. Again, this was more of that vintage stitching tablecloth. This is a double pocket. Ooh, bright and fun. And then we have this one, also double pocket. Pink and green, classic. So then we have two of these little blue flower sweeties. So beautiful rose bouquets with blue and pink on the inside. Those are both the same. Just one little fabric one. As you can see, I always quilt cross hatch diagonal quilts. If it's fabric only, this is a double pocket one. This is a total one of a kind. Sweet little purple flowers. I think that was like the edge of some vintage stitching case. Oh, this one was an extra piece I had from last week. So if you remember last month had a butterfly, this is the rest. So you can see this little blue flower also came from that vintage table runner. Oh my goodness, double pocket, so sweet. I almost kept like the orange, oh, so fun. Okay, and then, hold on. This one, I have two, one, let's do this one. So this one, sorry if I'm shaking you, this one's got this few fruit compote bowl stitching, crazy cute, fun, bright colors. And then last but not least, there's these two which from afar are just bright and funky and kitchen fun. But look, this is a vintage stitching. This was a pillowcase. And it was just, it was this funky shape. I didn't know what to do. So I kind of just applique stitched it right on there. God, it was so fun. And it's got coordinating fabric on the inside. From that pillowcase stitch, there were random pieces that I could not salvage in one big piece. So instead, I salvaged them and added them into a patchwork variety using that same pink and green kitchen collection. <sighs> so cute. And that's the inside. So it's a short, small, sweet collection for March. And that's because I'm busy, busy, busy sewing the April box keepers which are adorable um okay so let me check my list I think that's it it is okay so the one thing I do want to remind you guys so again I won't be here next Friday for a floss tube um I am going to try I promised this before today I am filming a top 10 quilty um materials supplies that you might need might want for the quilt along and that will release next week sometime and then the next time you will see me live and in person live is monday march 13th at 10 a.m eastern will be our first live for the quilt along so what i am doing is every monday we are doing a live video at 10 a.m and we're going to be doing that week's sewing the the at least instructional if, if it's an assembly part and it's going to take more than an hour we're not you're not going to watch me sew the whole thing but we're going to do what you need to do that week live together in person so i can answer the questions with you and go over that now remember if you cannot access the live don't worry put the comment the questions in the comments down below when you watch the live after and then on either Wednesday or Thursday, I don't think I figured out a time yet, I will come back with the supplemental video answering said questions if there's a lot of questions. Otherwise, I'll just throw them into Friday's Floss Tube video. We're kind of just gonna wing it, go, but see how it goes. But the moral of the story is Monday, March 13th at 10 a.m. Eastern, come back, have your supplies ready, your materials and your fabrics, and we're going to get started on the quilt runner, on the table runner quilt along. So that is what I have for you today, friends. Short, sweet, really wasn't short or sweet. I feel like I talked forever. I don't even know. So, but that's what I've got. And I hope that you have a fabulous week, a have fabulous weekend. Get lots of stitching, sewing, knitting, making, quilting, whatever makes you happy. 
in and I will see you next time, friends. Happy stitching.